Just moments ago, court documents were unsealed, revealing the names of people associated to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. It's the first set of names that will be released. Epstein and his former girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, were both accused of trafficking young girls to be abused by Epstein. Epstein died by suicide in a New York City jail cell in 2019 after he was charged. Maxwell was convicted in a slew of charges in 2021 and is currently serving a 20-year prison sentence. NBC senior legal correspondent Laura Jarrett has been following this story for us. And Laura, I want to be very frank and honest with our viewers, as we always are here on Top Story. We literally just got these documents. There are hundreds of documents. Our team of producers and reporters like yourself have been pouring over this, but just recently. So my first question to you is, and I, and I don't even know if we have an answer yet, are there any headlines out of the documents we've seen so far? Uh, well, I can tell you, Tom, we have about 943 pages of documents, so it's quite a bit to pour through. It's mostly deposition transcripts and motions that I have seen in this civil suit involving, um, civil suit involving Jelaine Maxwell, obviously somebody who had been accused of grooming young girls for abuse by Jeffrey Epstein. It includes deposition transcripts from Maxwell herself, where she's asked about different sex acts with Jeffrey Epstein. And and she denies, obviously, any wrongdoing, even though she's now been, of course, convicted and serving time behind bars. But this is from years ago when she was still maintaining her innocence. And she specifically asked Tom about interactions that Clinton, former President Bill Clinton, may have had with Jeffrey Epstein. She specifically asked about meals with Clinton. She says she can't re recollect any meals with him. She's asked about whether he may, being Clinton, may have had a meal on Jeffrey Epstein's plane. She says, quote, I'm sure they had a meal on Jeffrey Epstein's plane. So, Tom, these are the types of interactions that we expected. Much of this has already been reported in the public domain. But it's different now, of course, seeing it in a court filing. These are court files that had been redacted, kept under wraps for many years as part of that civil litigation that I mentioned. And we're going to continue pouring through to uncover what we have found. I should mention none of this, obviously, suggests any wrongdoing by the former president, suggests that he was involved in a crime. It's merely talking about his connections to Epstein, something that has already, again, been out there. But he has obviously maintained uh, his innocence and denied any wrongdoing as it relates to any abuse by people that ex uh, Epstein exploited, Tom. You know, Laura, I was able to read through some of the documents as well involving Ghislaine Maxwell. One of the things I noticed is a lot of those point to direct questions that, that are about sexual encounters. She says, I don't recollect. There's never a flat out. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say never, but at least in the, in the exchanges I saw, there's never a flat out. No, it's I do not. I don't recollect. I don't recollect with very specific pointed questions about times and acts and things like that. Do you think that's just because of advice from her counsel or do you think I guess my question is when somebody wants to deny something, can they just say no or I do not recollect. Sometimes you understand that to mean they're protecting themselves as well. Yeah, sometimes you often see witnesses couch it, um, especially um, when they know there might be some legal jeopardy there. And remember, these are deposition transcripts that are happening years, years back, Tom. The lawsuit that we're talking about here in question dates back to 2015. It's long been since settled. But the court records, obviously, of interest to reporters who sued to try to get this information. So when she says, I don't recall, and in other places she does flatly deny some of the allegations, it's obviously well before, you know, all of the federal investigation that ultimately led to her downfall and led to her prison sentence for 20 years behind bars. She's now, of course, serving. And Laura, I think it's good to remind our viewers why this is happening right yeah. now, right? This is all part of a lawsuit that happened between one of Epstein's victims, um, Virginia Jufre, against Ghislaine Maxwell. And finally, the judge said, listen, there's, there's, there's this lawsuit. The public wants to know. We're going to release the names. We know there's several names, right? There's there's hundreds of court filings. There are several names. We know at least two people, right, ha have asked that, that their names not be revealed just yet, and the judge is going to wait 30 days. What do we know more about those two people? So it's possible, Tom, that they could easily both be survivors, victims of Epstein's abuse. We know that some of these documents still have redaction, and it's our understanding that some of the victims who were underage at the time of the abuse have asked that their identities still be protected, and the judge has wanted to honor 
honor that. Two of them, we don't obviously know their identities. They're still anonymous. The court has said she's going to look at that. She's going to take it under evaluation and figure out what to do with documents that still mention those two people. If there are any John Doe's, perhaps, you know, former associates, friends of Epstein's, men who were associated with him in ways, obviously, um, that are problematic, we'll have to wait and see. But the court has already said most of these documents are not supposed to be salacious. Again, a lot of this has come out through public um, evidence and reporting so far, but we're we're still in early days here as we dig through uh, just the first couple of these and come on there with you. And, and Laura, I know because so many people have been attracted to this story. They've, they've watched this story. It's led to so many conspiracy theories. Going through the documents I went through, I did see already names redacted. We know part of it are, uh, might be a John Doe, a Jane Doe, who the court's going to review now for 30 days. But again, there's also victims who they don't want their names out there. Right. Will those names stay redacted because they were minors at the time of the crime? They should. They, they have asked for their identities to be protected. They have said that they have faced threats given uh, the connection to this case. And so they have asked for their own safety for those names to stay redacted. And I think the court is going to honor that, Tom. OK, Laura, I know you got to pour through about 900 documents. So we're going to let you do that. When you find something else interesting, we're going to come back to you. We thank you for your initial reporting. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.